Hello, Atonement family, and welcome to the house of the Lord to worship, no matter where you are. Today is Pentecost Sunday, and it is the third great festival of the Christian church, along with Christmas and Easter. And it's been celebrated by believers since at least the year 217 A.D. The color for the day is red because we're reminded of the tongues of fire that sat on the heads of each of the people gathered together on the first Pentecost day. It also reminds us of the blood of the martyrs, which is sometimes referred to as the seed from which the church grew. Today we're going to focus in on the, worship, on the work of the Holy Spirit, particularly being reminded that the Holy Spirit is our counselor, who has repaired our broken relationship with God forever. We begin our worship with the opening litany. You'll see responsive parts put up on your screen, and we'll also sing verses of praise to the Lord the Almighty interspersed. Come, Holy Ghost, God and Lord. May all your graces be our Lord. On each believer's mind and heart. Lord, by the brightness of your light, in holy faith your church unite. From every land and every tongue, let us to your praise, O Lord our God, be sung. God tells us that we're born into this world dead in sin, inclined towards evil, hostile to God. How desperately we need a new spirit, humbly we confess. O oh, holy God, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in Jesus, I pray, cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Take heart. The Holy Spirit has taken away your heart of stone and has given to you a heart of flesh, a heart made alive through the knowledge that Jesus is your Savior from sin. You stand before God as washed, sanctified, justified, because Jesus lived, died, and rose for you. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. The Spirit of God has made me. The breath of the Almighty gives me life. From the beginning, God shows you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. God saved me through the washing of rebirth and 
and renewal by the Holy Spirit. You yourselves are God's temple, for God's Spirit dwells within you. The Spirit of God intercedes for me in accordance with God's will. Holy Spirit, God and Lord, come to us this joyful day with your sevenfold gift of grace. Rekindle in our hearts the holy fire of your love, that in a true and living faith we may tell abroad the glory of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Father, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Gospel reading for Pentecost Sunday is taken from the book of John, chapter 16, where Jesus is speaking to his disciples on Monday, Thursday evening, obviously a night that's filled with trepidation and worry and wondering, and part of Jesus' encouragement to them is that he is going to send the Holy Spirit, the Counselor. We read, Now I am going to him who sent me, Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? Because I have said these things, you are filled with grief. But I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes... He will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. In regard to sin, because men do not believe in me. In regard to righteousness, because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And in regard to judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We continue by singing the first two verses of the hymn, Holy Spirit Ever Dwelling. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with the fire of your love 
as we meditate upon your word. The word of God which we'll focus on today is the account of Pentecost as recorded in Acts chapter 2 where we read, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men aren't drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, who promised to send the Holy Spirit and who did send the Holy Spirit, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. One of the most nerve-wracking days in my life was when I was a freshman in high school. I had tried out for the basketball team, and the day had come when the cuts were going to be announced. Who had made the team? Who had failed to make the team? And I was nervous! I would imagine most of us can relate to that, that most of us have felt some nervousness in regards to something that we wanted to belong to. Whether it was playing kickball out on the, out on the playground and you were hoping to get chosen on one team or the other or hoping to get chosen at all, whether you had tried out for a role in the school play or the dance team or something like that, if you wanted to make the choir, if you had applied to a certain college or you wanted a certain job, all of us want to know that we belong. We want to know that we fit in. We want to know that we made the cut. And when we fail to make the cut, man, it can be oh so hard, can't it? Heartbreaking. When we make it, oh, that can be so exhilarating and so fun. And if you're curious, yes, I made that freshman basketball team. Finally, though, the cut line that absolutely every one of us absolutely has to make sure that we make is being part of God's team. We absolutely must 
know where we stand with God when that great and glorious day of the Lord comes. When the moon is turned to blood and the sun is turned to darkness and Jesus returns in glory, we have to be on that team, brothers and sisters. We cannot afford to miss making that team because if we miss making that team, that means eternity in hell. Those who are on Jesus' team will spend eternity in heaven in the greatest joy they have ever had. Those who aren't on Jesus' team will spend eternity in hell suffering the greatest, most awful pain they have ever suffered. And there will be no second chances. Those who are on Jesus' team at the last day will be given grand and glorious new bodies. And they will be with Jesus for all eternity. And those who aren't on Jesus' team at the last day will have their bodies racked with pain for all of eternity. And there will be no second chances. And that, my brothers and sisters, is why Pentecost Day and the work of the Holy Spirit is so vital for you and for me. Because by nature, none of us could make the cut. The only way on our own that we could make the cut and be on Jesus' team was if we could be absolutely perfect. 100% of the time, always and there is not one person who has ever lived or will ever live who can do that. Not me. And not you either. We were born dead in sin. Hostile to God. Inclined towards evil all the time. But the Holy Spirit has called you by the gospel and enlightened you with his gifts and sanctified and kept you in the true faith. You see, it's the Holy Spirit who's given credit for being the faith worker. Oh, it's God overall. We can't split God into thirds because that's not the way God works. But when the scripture talks about faith being worked in the heart, the honor most often, is given to the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit who worked the miracle of faith in you on the day you were baptized. It's the Holy Spirit who is strengthening faith in your heart right now as you hear the words of God explained and applied. It's the Holy Spirit who speaks to you every time you open your Bibles or meditate on the words of God and the works of God. It's the Holy Spirit who's bringing you onto Jesus' team. But the Holy Spirit is oftentimes called the quiet member of the Trinity. Why so? Because the Holy Spirit is kind of like a spotlight. You know, when you go to a play or you go to a concert, you don't sit in the audience and look up into the sky and look at the spotlights. No. What you do is you look at whoever or whatever the spotlight is shining on. And that's kind of what the Holy Spirit is like. The Holy Spirit is like a spotlight. And what does he do? He shines the light on Jesus. The Holy Spirit testifies about Jesus, is what our gospel reading told us. And so the Holy Spirit shines on Jesus, puts Jesus in the spotlight and says, Look, you see that Jesus there? That's your Savior. Look, do you see that Jesus there in the, 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 the manger at Bethlehem? He came because he wanted to save you. Look, you see Jesus there on the cross? He's dying to pay for your sins. Look, do you see that empty grave that Jesus got out of? That's because your sins are totally and fully forgiven. Look, look at Jesus. 
That's what the Holy Spirit does. And so we actually don't have all that much in the Scriptures about the work of the Holy Spirit himself. In fact, our Pentecost reading that we just read a moment ago is one of the few places where we see the work of the Holy Spirit oh so clearly. And let's pull out a couple of details because they're really cool. First of all, did you notice? Tongues of fire came and, and lit on the heads of each one of them. Who are the each one of them? It's probably the 120 believers who had gathered up after Jesus' ascension. And those 120 believers were waiting for the promised Holy Spirit. Jesus had told them to wait and that the Holy Spirit would come and they were waiting. And the Holy Spirit could have taken one big old fireball and put it up above the whole room and that would have been cool too. But instead he chose to put a ball of fire, a tongue of flame on the heads of each and every one of them. Why? I think what the Holy Spirit was doing was reminding you and reminding me that each person on Jesus' team is just as important as all of the rest. The eleven had become twelve again because they had chosen Matthias to replace Judas. Matthias had a flame on his head. And so did Peter. Peter was just as important as Matthias, but Matthias was just as important as Peter. And oh yeah, believer number 27 and believer number 59 and believer number 83 and believer number 120, they all had flames of fire on their heads too. Because believer number 27 was just as important as the Apostle Thomas and the Apostle Philip was just as important as believer number 120 and so on and so forth. And if you had been there that day, you would have had a flame of fire too. Because you belong just as much as Peter, James, and John. And then what did they do? They went outside, and a crowd had gathered up, and they began to proclaim the words of God to the people, but they proclaimed the words of God to them in a whole bunch of different languages. Languages which the disciples had never studied, <laughs> but which the Holy Spirit miraculously allowed them to speak fluently, at least on that day. Why so? Because the best way for most of us to hear the Word of God and to be convinced of Jesus being our Savior is to hear it in our own native language. Or the way the Greek puts it, the tongue into which we were born. And so God made sure that the Cretans and the Arabs and the people from Libya and Egypt and Pamphylia and Phrygia and Pontus, etc., 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 all got to hear the words of God in their own language because God wanted them on his team. They belonged too. And if you and I had been there that day, one of the languages would have been English because you belong and I belong to the wonderful team of God just as much as Peter, James, John, Matthias, and all the rest. And who is it that convinced you of that? It's the Holy Spirit. So on Pentecost Day, we rejoice. We rejoice that the Holy Spirit reached out to each of us individually. That he took us to the baptismal font and with the application of water and the power of the spoken word, God worked faith in your heart. 
We thank God that He's taken us to His altar where we were fed and have been and will continue to be fed by the Lord's Supper so that God continue, can continue to convince us that our sins really are forgiven and that Jesus really loves us and died for us. Can you imagine, brothers and sisters, when God chose the teams, you made the cut. Oh, it was Jesus who earned it for you. But it was the Holy Spirit who chose you. And because He chose you, when that great and glorious day of the Lord comes, and the skies burst open and the sun is turned to darkness and the moon to blood, it will be made clear to everyone who has ever lived that you belong. You are on Jesus' team. The Holy Spirit called you to it now. And you will rejoice to belong to that team forever and ever. Amen? Amen. Having heard the words of our God, the believer responds with joy, saying, Yes, Lord, I believe what you have said. Today we make that confession of faith using the third article of the Apostles' Creed, the part which focuses on the work of the Holy Spirit and Luther's biblical explanation thereof. We speak it together. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own thinking or choosing, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and fully forgives all sins to me and all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and will give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. O Holy Spirit of God, we worship and glorify you as the Lord and giver of all spiritual life. By our own thinking and choosing, 
we would still be lost in our sins, wandering in spiritual darkness towards eternal death. But because you have given us the gift of faith, we now thankfully confess that Jesus Christ is our Savior. Because you have enlightened us, we know the loving heart of our Father in heaven and the promise of eternal life. We praise you for calling us by the gospel and making us sons and daughters of God by faith in Christ Jesus. By baptism, you clothed us in Jesus' righteousness. You gathered us into his flock, the one holy Christian church, where we hear our shepherd's voice. Live in us, Holy Spirit. Warm our hearts with the fire of your love. Continue to preserve us in the one true faith. Use the gospel in word and sacrament to continue to build and strengthen our faiths. Enable us to present ourselves with all our abilities as thank offerings to Jesus, who sacrificed himself for us. O Holy Spirit, we pray particularly today that you'd pour out your healing and comfort upon the family of Audrey, Audrey Vargas, who you recently called home to heaven. Bless the family, including Steve Krause and Ray Dumke. Assure them that Jesus is their Savior. Pour out upon them the peace that only you can give. Sanctify us in body, mind, and spirit to glorify our Father in heaven and to serve our neighbor here on earth with good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. And we conclude our worship by singing the three verses of Holy Spirit, Light Divine.
Hello, I'm Reverend Jim Beringer, Director of Well Special Ministries. More than 60 years ago, women of the Lutheran Women's Missionary Society stepped up to inaugurate our Synod's Mission for the Visually Impaired. Many women learned Braille. Countless others helped manage the ministry. Their first project was a Braille version of the Catechism. Then they moved into audiobooks and beyond. Today, the ministry continues to grow thanks to new technologies and an eagerness to spread the gospel. When Pastor Tim Redfield and his wife Megan adopted Libby, they knew she had a number of challenges that included blindness. <laughs> High five. <laughs> Find my hand. High five. <laughs> High five. And they also learned she has some special gifts, which became clear one day when she started playing songs on the piano, even though she'd never had a lesson. And Megan and I were just shocked. She listens, takes it in, never had any lessons, uh, and, and plays beautiful music. Uh, so it definitely, my prayer for her is that she can use her musical gifts to serve the church in some way. While Libby may indeed serve the church someday, the more immediate question is, how can we in the church serve her and the many thousands like her who have visual impairments? Part of the answer is here, at the Wells Visually Impaired Workshop in Minnesota, where volunteers gather to convert synod materials into braille, large print, and audio, materials that are used all over the world. The need is bigger than what most people think. Every single congregation has somebody or several people that are visually impaired. 24-30. That's it. That's it. The materials created here can help connect the visually impaired to the larger community of believers. Capital Sun. I lost my vision. It'll be 13 years next month. If you wanted to go look up um, a passage or you, or you were at church and wanted to sing, what, do you, what happens when you can't see that anymore? You start losing that peace and you start losing the connection that you have and giving them something that they can hang on to and count on, very important. That helpful attitude, that's what kind of runs through all of our volunteers. They, they really enjoy knowing that what they're doing is going to get the word to someone else. This is the listen.wells.net right. page. This will... It's a time of great opportunity for this ministry as new technologies allow us to multiply our reach. Here, a team in Milwaukee is connecting Wells Publications to an Amazon service called Polly that will read our Synod's books out loud for users at no additional cost. We want to translate the entire People's Bible using the Amazon Polly, so you don't actually need the reader, someone actually reading the document, but rather we're using the computer to, to read it. It's just been really refreshing to listen to have the opportunity to listen to God's Word. What a wonderful blessing to have these, you know, doctrinally sound, these biblically sound um, resources available for our daughter, but also for so many other people that they can make use of the resources. Whether it's our youngest members, our oldest members, or people who are not members at all, Wells Mission for the Vision Impaired is bringing the gospel to the world. Wells Mission for the Visually Impaired is run by volunteers, people like you who are committed to this important work. Today, it's easier than ever to be part of this ministry because much of the work can be done from home. We want to thank you, the members of LWMS who have been with us from the beginning.